Notion can be an overwhelming experience when you first start to learn the ropes. It's a very open-ended program, so there's no one clear path to do something. This of course is one of Notion's biggest strengths, but when you first start out, it's quite scary. The past few weeks, I had the chance to work with uh, several new users, and after a while, that pattern started to emerge. They were all getting tripped up on the same things, which means that they're certainly not the only ones. So the plan with this video is to go through the most common issues new users face and break them down into more digestible concepts. In future videos, we'll dive deeper into database setups and best practices, but before doing that, we need to first understand why things work a certain way. So let's start. Let's first start with the basic ingredients of Notion. Everything in Notion is a page. What we see on the sidebar is not folders that categorize our content. It's pages that might also contain other pages inside them. We can give each one of these pages a different icon just to differentiate them, but they're still pages. A page is made out of blocks. Notion has a big variety of block types. A piece of text or a title or an image, they're all different types of blocks. By grabbing them and moving them around, we can create different layouts. To access more of these blocks, we just type slash and then either scroll through the list or type the block we need. A database, which is one of Notion's strongest features, is essentially a collection of pages. Notion has six different ways to display a database, but no matter how the database might look, the underlying ingredient is the same. We just have a group of pages with some extra metadata. We define these based on what we want to do. In this example, it's the status of the task, the person it's assigned to, the due date, the task priority, etc. Let me now show you another example of a database. This is the one I use for my videos and each page contains the script, research, and other information I might need for the video. To display the database, I'm using a table view and the properties for the page are different than the ones for the task database. We have published date, the state of the video, basically anything that makes sense for this specific database. But just because we only see these properties, it doesn't mean that they're the only ones there. If we go to properties, you will notice that there are several more that I'm not displaying in this view. And that's because they're not relevant for this view. In this view, I'm only interested in seeing the published videos and their dates. If we go back to the home page, this section here is the exact same database as the other one. But here I'm using a gallery layout that filters and groups the content based on the production stage the video is in. Scripting, filming, editing, etc. That's the power of using a database. We can define properties and rearrange our content however we like. This, for example, is a template I created to track my business income and expenses. It's available to purchase, so if you're interested, you'll find it in the product shelf right underneath this video and also in the description below. Even though this page now looks more like an accounting software, the base ingredient is the same. Pages filtered and rearranged a certain way. So to recap, everything in Notion is a page. A database is a collection of pages, and in turn, a page is made out of blocks. Now, let's talk a little bit about the sidebar. Try to avoid using it as a way to navigate through your content. Looking for a specific page in the sidebar will just result in you getting frustrated because 99% of the time you won't find what you're looking for. The pages of a database, for example, won't show up there. You will only be able to see the views we've set up for our databases. What you can do instead is use the sidebar the same way you would approach browsing a website. You click on the top level page like you would on the site's menu and then go through that page to find what you need. Alternatively, you can use Command P or Control P to search for a specific page. Because Notion is such an open-ended tool with a lot of powerful features and app integrations, some people tend to go nuts with their setups, especially at the beginning once you realize the potential. 
But as the saying goes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. For example, avoid having dashboards showing you the weather, time or stock performance. It's completely unnecessary. These are things that you don't really have to have inside Notion. If you want to see what time it is, just look at your computer's clock. Problem solved. And if you want to have access to other widgets, just use what's available on Windows or Mac OS. There's no reason to clutter your Notion's workspace with all these unnecessary elements. And the same thing applies for overly complex setups. For example, having multiple databases that relate to many other databases. This might sound like a neat idea, but it can slow things down and make things difficult to problem solve. Of course, in some cases you will need this type of setup, but I would say 99% of your needs can be met with simple databases, especially when you're first starting out. So my advice here would be to resist the urge to over-engineer things. Something else I see happen quite often is people going all in with Notion. They track their fitness, their sleep, they use it for notes, everything you can imagine under the sun. But you don't have to use Notion for everything. There are dedicated apps that can handle certain tasks much better. Your grocery list, for example, doesn't have to be in Notion. It can live in your phone's to-do app. It's faster, easier, and much simpler to add items to it. I would also encourage you to stick to one workspace, unless you really, really have to split things up. It's not difficult to switch between workspaces, but it just adds unnecessary barriers and friction. I personally have just one workspace that has everything in it. Of course, your needs may vary, and it might benefit you to have one more workspace to maybe separate your work stuff from your personal stuff. That's fine, just don't go overboard with it. I've seen people with four and five or more workspaces, and I would say at that point, things will start getting unmanageable. At some point, especially at the beginning, this will happen quite often. You have deleted something and you don't know how to get it back. First off, don't panic. There are several ways to recover your content. If you have deleted a page, you can get it back by going to the Applications Trash section and checking the list there. Once you find your page, you can just press the Restore button and you're back in business. At some point in June of this year, Notion will change how long the pages will stay in the trash. If it's been more than 30 days, then the trash will be automatically emptied. Just keep that in mind in case you're trying to look for a page that's uh, 6 months old, but I would say 30 days is more than enough time. So the trash can is for pages. If you're now missing, let's say, a paragraph from your page, the page history is what you need. It can be accessed by going to View Edit History from the menu at the top right of the page. There you'll be able to browse all of the page's history, and then recover either part of the page or the entirety of the page. If you only want to recover part of it, you can just select the missing piece of content, copy it, and then paste it back to your page. If you want to restore the whole thing, you can hit the Restore button and the whole page will be reverted back to that version. How far back you can go depends on your plan. If you're a free user, it's 7 days. And for paid plans, it's much longer. 30 days for the plus plan, 90 for business, and unlimited for enterprise. Personally, the 30 days option is more than fine for my needs, so the plus plan pretty much covers it. But let's say that you've done everything you could and you're still missing your content. This is the point where you should contact Notion support. That's as long as your deleted content is not more than 30 days old. Just try to provide them with as much information about the content as possible. For example, the title of the page or words that were contained in that page, anything really that will help them identify the part that you're missing. Okay, so that's that. Let's now focus on something that a ton of users stumble on, and when that happens, it can be quite a shock. <laughs> So you're having a blast with Notion and then one day you receive an invoice asking you for more money, but you have already paid for your subscription. This has to do with how Notion's pricing model is structured and the fact that they're not doing a great job communicating how things work. 
a notion you're paying by the amount of members in your workspace. So let's say you're paying 90 euros per year for your plus plan. If you invite another member, you'll have to pay 90 euros for them too. And if you add one more, that's 90 euros on top of that. AI is also a global setting and it's enabled per workspace. So if you want to use Notion's AI, you'll have to pay not only for yourself, but the other two members as well. That's another 90 euros per member. As you can see, things can quickly add up. All of a sudden, you went from paying 90 euros per year to 540 euros per year. So if you want to collaborate with other people and you don't want to pay all this money, you can invite them to your workspace as guests instead of members. Guests don't incur fees. The Plus plan, for example, allows for 100 guests, so it's going to be a long time before you run out of guest slots. Members and guests don't have the same rights, but you can still collaborate absolutely fine with just having guest members. I would say if you're an individual and you want to invite a friend to check out and uh, comment on a page, inviting them as a guest is going to do the job. If though you have a small company and you want other employees to easily collaborate with each other, it's a better idea to add them as members. Just prepare yourself though for the bigger cost. Notion is used by a lot of students, researchers, scriptwriters, and many other people who have to deal with pages upon pages of text. Usually when you write your paper or your script, you would also like to quickly reference your notes. Let's go to one of my own uh, video scripts so we have a little bit of a visual feedback. So here I have my two pages. The first one is the script, and the second one the notes I need to reference in order to write the script. One way to go about this is to open the notes on a new tab and then switch between the two. It's certainly one way of doing things, but it's clunky and tiring to constantly have to go back and forth. Thankfully, there's a much better way to go about it. So let's go back to the main page and now I'll copy the link for the notes page and I'll paste it in the script page. We get a pop-up with three options, and the one we want is the second one, link to page. Now if I option click or bring up the pop-up menu, I can open up my notes in a side view. So now I have both documents side by side and I can easily reference or copy paste notes from one document to another. Pretty cool, huh? Now let me show you another cool thing that comes in very handy if you're writing super long documents. Let's say that this is my very long dissertation. If I have to scroll through this to find the specific piece of text I'm looking for, it's going to get very tricky very fast. What we can do to help us with that is to create a table of contents. And thankfully, Notion has that as a block type. So let's type slash and then type table. Okay, currently it's not doing much because it's missing the necessary formatting. So let's say that this is where my introduction will start. If I type introduction, nothing happens. But once I convert this to a heading, the table of contents is immediately updated. We now have one entry. Let's add another one. This time though, let's use Markdown, which is going to be faster than typing the text, selecting it, and then converting it to a heading. Markdown uses symbols to format text a specific way, making it bold, converting it to a heading, etc. I'll have a link with the Markdown syntax in the description below. So now if I type hashtag and then my title, the text will be automatically converted to a heading. With heading 1, we get a chapter. If we want a subchapter, we can use heading 2. So let's type two hashes and then the text. And as you can see, this section now becomes a subsection of the previous chapter. Likewise, heading 3 or 4 will add further subsections. So now that we have things set up, we can easily go to the table of contents and pick the chapter we want to go to. And Ocean will send us right to it, without us having to scroll through the document to find the right spot. 
I use this all the time when I write my tutorials and it makes things so much easier. And that's it. These are the most common issues beginners face when using Notion. If you would like me to cover a specific topic or how to create a setup in Notion, just let me know in the comments below. There's a ton of cool stuff we can do with Notion. It's a really incredible app. So until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next one.